In last week's video I started building this arbor press and I made these two parts that came out really well and I think they will work. But I had to stop working on this project because outside it was dark and it was freezing. And today I couldn't continue because it was snowing. Snow. Bah. But as you can see, I survived the 2023 blizzard. Between two falling snowflakes, I managed to clean up these bigger parts. So now all my rough material is ready to be cut in the right dimensions. And to avoid mistakes and also, of course, waste of material. First, I have to take an important decision. Linda tea or rose nip? Hmm. My first idea was to cut a piece of this big chunk of steel and install it right here between the ram and the main body. But there's no need. I want the ram and the main body to have the same height. So I thought I cut off here. Not a good idea. If I cut this length on the other side, I have a very nice piece of material left to make something else with. And if I cut this plate in two in the middle, I have two plates that I put here and my little shaft here can go through, problem fixed. All I have to do is to make some kind of lid that comes on this side. So first let's start by cutting off this piece. Oops. I had to cut it in two times and flip the part around because the machine doesn't have enough reach, it's touching here and it's not cutting through. And I think now this little penso can use a bit of rest. Now my parts have the same height. What I want to do is clean up some little surface here on the bottom plate and of course the bottom surface of this one and drill and tap holes so it can hold the both parts together with these cute little bolts through here. I think that could work really well. Over to the milling machine.
I had to cut off a little bit of these bolts here because they didn't fit in the countersink. But now they do. Now these bolts, you can buy this in little packs, two or four pieces. And when you buy the quantity you need in these little packs, it quickly becomes very expensive. And that's why I bought a whole box of them. So now I have enough bolts for the rest of my life and maybe future generations. Now that the thing here is assembled and I think it looks more or less good, a question could be of course, did it fit from the first go? Of course not. What a stupid question. I measured this thing with my little scale. Oh, I say that's a 40 mm plate. So I made the pocket 40 mm. It didn't fit. So I remeasure with my calipers, it's 40.5. So I had to recut, but now the thing fits. But whatever. Next thing to do is, of course, the two plates that come here. But this thing is 38, this thing is 40.5. So I have to cut two surfaces and I will cut them exactly the same width as the, the width of these two plates that come here. So they will serve a bit as a locating system idea. So I don't have to put locating pins in. And the best machine to make this cutout for this plate is of course the milling machine. But I will do it here on the shaper just uh, to show you that it's possible. As you can see, I'm using here a slotting tool because I'm creating two right shoulders, flat surface, two right shoulders. The clapper box is straight because it's not very deep cut, it's 1.3 millimeters mark here. I can get away with it, the clapper will lift more than 1.3 millimeters. Now this is a 0.5 millimeter cut, not too much, small machine. Perfect. Because I have to drill holes in this part and I have to do it on the milling machine anyway, I will also cut the other side of this part here on the milling machine. I think it will be easier. It saves me a setup. I always forget that some time ago I made this Baker fly cutter and as you can see it works just fine.
because of my fly cutter here is in an angle, this cutting tool is uh, 30 degrees or 60, whatever, I finish it off with a normal carbide end mill. And I have to stop cutting because the bolt of this uh, clamp thing here is going to touch the quill. So, primitive. It is a very tight fit, but I will make it fit, no problem. Let's drill holes. These two surfaces are now finished and the holes are drilled and the thing is put together again. And I will hold these uh, side plates on with threaded rods because I don't have bolts long enough. Ah. Ah. Let's make a start on these uh, side plates. I will install them both in one setup but only to cut this surface here just to clean it up to have it square because with this setup if I want to drill both parts at the same time what I think could be a good idea I'm gonna drill in the vise what I think is not a good idea very light change of plants over here I cut them one by one because this little cutter here is not long enough to take the toe both in one go. I don't have a boring head for my milling machine I bore this half out here on the lathe and as you can see it works perfectly fine I finished drilling all the holes in these two plates and as you can see it even fits sort of and as is tradition of course there's also the bozo hole but that's not a big problem because I'm gonna cut off at this angle so this hole will disappear and no one will ever know no problem and I think I'm gonna stop this video for the moment right here because today is Friday and Friday this video comes out so up to editing <laughs>